Well, thank you for having me today. I know it was a last minute switch, but I'm Travis Sells. I'm the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Animal Services for the City of Rockwall. I also am the newly appointed Chairman of the Rockwall County uh, Historic Commission uh, with uh, Judge Mark Russo. So thank you for having me today. So talking about the Nathan Butler Cemetery, we actually started an Eagle Scout project there here about a month or two ago. Um, had an Eagle Scout want to come in and do something for the community. And this is one of the cemeteries that is just completely overgrown. You don't even realize it's a cemetery and if you even know where it's at. So um, he has done three work days so far and he has done an excellent job. So a lot of things, we found out a lot of things about this in the process of working with him. So it used to be called the Old Williams Graveyard and then it was called the Fredonia Hill Graveyard and it's currently the Nathan Butler Cemetery when you look back through records. So the Eagle Scout started, he started in like November and then the holidays and weather sort of delayed him. He did his last work day this past Saturday. Um, his name is Lawrence and I think it's Troop 83. He's had about 10 uh, helpers out there helping him. They work eight to three every day and it's a challenge. It's not something I would want to approach with the park services staff. So he's, he's taken on a big project and he's doing a great job. So clearing and everything is done. He is now fixing to start the identification process. When you see some pictures here in a little bit, it's going to be a challenge. And he also has a grandfather that uh, I think is going to try to GPS all the markers so we have them on a map. So inventory is what's in the process. Now in the process of doing this, we found out somebody applied for historical cemetery designation back in 2002. And it got approved but no one ever ordered the medallions and the signs and the markers. So I ordered all of that in November of 23, and I hope to have it by maybe September of this year, and then we'll get those installed out there. Can you tell us where it's at? I've got a map I'm oh, gonna show okay. you. It's over off of Lakeshore, and I've got a, an identification map, because truly, if you don't know where it's at, you're not, even if you go to it, you don't know it's a cemetery, but <laughs> now you will. He is, he is located somewhere between 100 and 150 markers of very various types. We don't know if they've been moved, vandalized. Uh, there's there's a real uh, a lot of them are just concrete crosses that looks like somebody at some point poured a bunch of them and laid them everywhere. Don't know if maybe the headstones were. Uh, becoming non-readable and, and missing and somebody wanted to try to re-identify the markers. Really don't know. Hoping in his research he figures that out. So the known burials out there according to the when they applied for the actual uh, historical designation are those individuals right there and the earliest one goes all the way back to 1815 but we have found one out there that looks like they were born in 1770 somewhere in there that's not a part of this so like i said he's got a, he's got a big challenge on his hands but uh what he's done so far i'm pretty sure he's going to probably be very successful so there's where it's located lake shore so um your chick-fil-a would be here squabble creek would be right here if you're familiar with the squabble squabble creek hike and bike trail it's in this D.R. Horton neighborhood, and there's actually a little parking lot with two spaces that's owned by the HOA, and that is the cemetery. Ooh. Right there amongst the houses. Where would Chick-fil-A be? Chick-fil-A, if you went on down Lakeshore here, Chick-fil-A would be right over here on the road. Oh, okay. Uh, 205 is running right here, but it's about another half mile down the road. So it's on the north side of, north, north side of Lakeshore. So these were the photos that were submitted with the uh, historical designation back in 2002. And you're fixing to see the drastic change that 22 years of no one paying attention uh, took its toll. There it is now. Oh my goodness. So we think that headstone right there is that headstone. You can see it, it's literally a green belt now. It, it's not a cemetery any longer. And that, that just happened in 22 years because 
it's 2002. At some point, it's very obvious, trees were being trimmed and it was maintained. And then for some, for some reason over the last 22 years, <coughs> not much has happened. So when we got there with the Eagle Scout, this was the gate into it. This was just a wall of brush. I mean, you couldn't even enter. So his first project is he cleared that out. And you can't really tell from the pictures, but this is a granite trail leading you in. And then he has opened up the areas. These are laying everywhere out there. There's probably a hundred of them. And it looks like whoever did it, they poured them all at once. They all look the same. And they're just sporadically everywhere. Sometimes they're near a headstone. Sometimes they're just laying in the grass. Sometimes they're in the trees. We're really not sure. My guess is, as I said earlier, I think at some point somebody noticed that the headstones were starting to disappear and you couldn't identify them. I think somebody poured a bunch of these and went out there and tried to lay them where they think burials were. Now, have they been moved by kids, picked up over the years? We really don't know. Um, probably the only way you'd ever know that is to get uh, GPR out there, ground penetrating radar, to coincide with burials. So, as you see, we've opened up. There are some really immaculate headstones uh, from some of the stuff. This is probably another two foot underground because the verbiage just stops. So, the grade has actually changed, it appears, too. And again, it's it's very obvious that probably was not a burial like that's why that's why we think things have been moved. We're also finding many of these, which are the current way that uh, burials are identified before markers go in with a little aluminum sign with the plastic, which wasn't used back in the 1800s. Those are sporadically scattered everywhere too. So I'm not sure when the last burial was, but I think it was probably in the mid 1900s. Wow. Because I, these were not used uh, back in the day. It's hard to tell if these are headstones or if it was an above ground uh, crypt. Uh, if it was borders, like when you go to a current cemetery, you'll see people will line the, the, the grave with like limestone and things to identify. Not really sure because 90% of the writing on these are gone because it's all everything out there is sandstone, which is super soft. And uh, so he, he's, he's got a lot of challenges ahead. And this is one that we were talking about. It says, in memory of B something who died, and then the rest of it's all underground. So it's obvious either the headstone is sunk drastically or terrain has changed out there. Not sure if this was a well, a fire pit. We're really not sure. Just another um, item that was found out there. These here, not really sure if those were four headstones and they've been broken off and they're missing, or if it was, there used to be rocks that identified an entire marker. There's one of the crosses. There's one of the modern day markers. Are these more current pictures, or are these from the These, these pictures are from me uh, this past Saturday. Yes, these are current ones after he did clearing. And he's identified 100 to 150 of them. We're not sure if there's more, uh, <coughs> but I think we've gone as far as we're going to go into the woods right now until we can try to see where we're at on these. Now, this is the marker that's been ordered for it. It's the historical Texas Cemetery marker. And this will be the bottom now. We're actually, on March 22nd, 10 a.m., this is being installed at the Rockwall Memorial Cemetery that was given this designation last year, and we just got in the marker. So it'll, it'll end up saying Nathan Butlin Cemetery established. I don't know what the date that they decided was, but we know it's at least the early 1800s, but we've actually found the 1700s, so I'm not sure. And then it'll say 2002 there, and that'll be installed as soon as they come in. It takes the state about nine months to make those. How did it get named Nathan Butler? Is that the family that, that was concerned about it? Or? I really don't know, and we're hoping that's found out with his research. Nathan Butler had property in that area. So that's yeah. probably the reason. Okay. And I'm, we're not really sure where the Fredonia Hill came from. Uh, or
or the Williams. I'm sure those were names at some point also. The families 